well, the only way I knew the college at all was through adult ed. And I wasn't the only one. There were three other board members that came on because they were on the parent-child workshops. So that, that was the nucleus. The parent-child workshops were established in the 50s, and they were under adult education. And I would say they were probably, well, they were a very big chunk of adult education at that point. I had already had an experience on an elementary board where I was the only woman and the first woman that had ever been elected. So I, uh, I had no feeling of that. It was very much a feeling of the seven board members that in order to put together a team, we were to do different things. The women had time to do things when the men did not, and men had time to do things when the women did not. And the idea was everybody was expected to carry one-seventh of the load, and you weren't, you weren't on the team if you didn't, but yet it, we, we, we did different things. So I felt like an asset, but I do remember I was, uh, there were four men and three women, and the four men in turn served as president of the board. And finally, the fifth year, I was elected president of the board. And afterwards, somebody came up and said in a very low voice, I never knew who it was, congratulations, I didn't think they'd ever elect a woman. <laughs> I can go right up the coast. We had Ben Wells, who was the postmaster of Goleta and was on the Goleta uh, Elementary Board, who knew, may I say, everybody in Goleta. I mean, you couldn't have found anybody who knew more. I was on the Hope Board. The Hope District was between the Goleta District and the, um, and the High School District. And um, so I had some, I had elementary board experience. Then on coming from Santa Barbara, we had Bill Filippini, who was um, head of the Biz Business Trades Council. And in my opinion, was the most knowledgeable board member when it came to the town, the job, the whole thing. In other words, he came on board knowing what was going on, which really the rest of it didn't. We had um, Winnie Lancaster, who had served uh, as an administrator with the college. Sid Frank, who had been on a parent-child workshop. We had Jim Garvin, who the Garvin Theater is named for, had been on an ele elementary board in uh, Montecito. And we had Dorothy Meggs, who was extremely well known, a real pioneer of the Goleta, I mean of the Carpinteria community. When the rest of us felt like we didn't know where Carpinteria, Carpinteria even was, she knew it all. She could tell us. I mean, that was the original board. We had the goal of putting our group together as a team. And you have to understand what we were at that point, because we were a team with an identity crisis and a job. We needed to solve our identity, and we needed to know what the job was. Because we came on board as seven people who were new to a college board. This was very unusual. Um, it, it happened because the state was reestablishing their educational priorities. It was very soon after the establishment of the master plan for higher education, and they had determined that they wanted every inch of California to be incorporated in a junior college district. So we had gone through a period of study here in Santa Barbara, some citizens had, who had brought a recommendation to the voters. We're recommending that this, this uh, district be established. With the, you will elect these trustees, and if you agree, then it will happen. We, uh, the six of the seven of us who were originally elected had been recruited to run for the board. And uh, mainly we, I look back on it, mainly we were recruited because we had experience on elementary boards. And they thought it would be helpful if they had people on the board who had some board experience. The other thing was our only association really with the college was through adult education. The only person on the board who really had previous experience was Bill Filippini, who had experience with the college. So we came on, we agreed to run, we ran, we were elected, we got the job, and then we had to figure out what the job was. And I remember coming first on the campus and looked around. 
went up over the hill, saw the view. I was staggered by the view. All of us were staggered by the view. We did not know the college. The college did not exist for us at that point. I looked around. Here was this tremendous view. I didn't see any grass at all, and maybe there were some trees. I don't remember. So we had this facility that it was our job to run. We found out subsequently that, that this facility was 30 acres, which was only one-fifth the size that they recommend for a junior college. So that was one of our problems, what we were going to do about that. We were also told, you will never grow on this campus beyond 2,000. So go ahead and plan for 2,000 students. Plan for the future, plan for 2,000 students. Well, we put our heads together, we thought, we're not sure about that. We've got to spend a little more time thinking about that. But in the meantime, we were getting acquainted with each other. And we were also getting acquainted with the college that presently existed. Because why was there something here when we arrived? That was because way in the past, in 1909 in our case, the state had permitted high school, city high school districts to establish 13th and 14th grades. So the first thing to be, they established our 13th and 14th grades in the ninth, in 1909. At the same time, an adult education program was put together that had the main uh, assignment of uh, teaching English as a second language. Um, but what was, what was the first language? The first language was not Spanish. The first language was Italian at that time. So when we organized the board, or very shortly thereafter, we had the old Italian families coming aboard as administrators. Two of them served as presidents of the college. And we, who are not members of the old Italian families, had to find out who constituted the community. Well, that also presented a problem because this was the Santa Barbara City College. But we were representing uh, the outlying areas that had been put into the college by the county committee. That was Galita, the Hope District, Montecito, and uh, Carpinteria. And we soon realized that it was important that we be able to represent those people too. This was not just Santa Barbara City's college, it was all our college. And this came up in other terms later because we, we spent a lot of time later talking about the name of the college. And we called it, it we, we got it as a Santa Barbara Junior College. We called it, we talked about calling it the Santa Barbara Community College, but it needed to be more specific than that. So we named it the Santa Barbara City College, even though those of us who live in the outlying areas of Montecito and Galita consider it just as much our college. So why did it comprise just this area? We wondered, I mean, why didn't they give us Vista Del Mar Elementary District, which is just up beyond Elwood? Because the, the county committee had been assigned the job of dividing the county into two community college districts with an equal tax base. Therefore, Allen Hancock District got six sevenths of the, of the land and half the tax base, and we got one seventh of the land and half the tax base. And they got the Vista Del Mar District that included the oil, oil company. We got the islands, so if there ever had been students who wanted to come in from the islands, that was our problem. And other districts elsewhere in the state had these problems. Kern County could barely figure out how to get their students to their district, but we never had that problem. So later on, we had little projects like uh, the marine tech diving, and uh, once they, we planted 6,000 abalones, but that's about as close as we got to the ocean. Other than the fact that to begin with, we got up, we went over, we looked down, we saw the staggering view, and our athletic director said, we're prepared here to do one thing, we can teach volleyball on the beach. And we got his point. We, he wanted some facilities. Well, he wasn't the only one that wanted facilities. This had, had been planned as a college for 2,000 people. So it had a library, which was appropriate for 2,000 people. 
and rapidly became inappropriate. It had a, the administration building, which had been built earlier on by the state college, which was now the university, and um, we had the student center. And that's when we pretty much decided we had to spend time talking about things like what is education. And we assumed that we wouldn't all agree on points, but we were determined that we would all have the same information. So it meant that we were talking to the same people. So who were these people that we were talking to? Uh, who, uh, we had to identify who we had to talk to. Very early on, it became evident that the faculty wanted to meet us and we wanted to meet the faculty. So they, would, uh, they started out by entertaining us and that was fun. I mean, they, it, was, it was a lot of fun being on this board. These people were wonderful people, they were friends. We were all putting together our little group act. And um, I was always impressed with the way the faculty was very good about not bringing up problems of the college. They would just bring up general problems that we were all interested in, such as the problem of just exactly what did the state mean by the state master plan, because we knew what the master plan was. The master plan was that the university was to be responsible for the top 12 and a half percent. The state college system was going to be responsible for everybody, the, the remaining uh, people that are down to the 40 percent, so, but it, period. So did that mean we were responsible for the bottom 60 percent? We talked that over at great length, and we rapidly came to the conclusion, no, we are responsible for the bottom 100 percent, and this whole community better know it, and they better, uh, we'll all better get on board. That means we had to be able to be a college to people that chose to take their first two years at a, a community college. It's now becoming much more evident that many people are choosing this because of the quality of the community college education, because of the fact that you live close enough so you can be at home and still go. But in those days, it, it, we had to synchronize with the university. So we, t we spent time talking to the faculty at the university, and they spent time talking to our faculty. It turned out quite a few of them were married to each other, so that helped. We had a lot of, uh, a lot of, we weren't just a farm club for the university. We had a lot of, we were a university town in which we were a college. This was, we were helping, we were solving our identity crisis. We knew what this was. Does that mean that Carpinteria is part of a university town? Absolutely it did. I mean, we were a unified college. And so I would say our goals to begin with, or our goal to begin with, was to together figure out who we represented, which was everybody from Elwood through Carpinteria. Who did that mean? That means all the students. That includes the adults that want to come back as students. They're students too. So if you use the word student in this particular district, that means everybody. That's all of us. And they did a study once, the university had a study, uh, finding out how many people in this whole area, in our area, had higher educations, meaning any education beyond the 12th grade. And they came up with a staggering number, which I hate to quote, uh, because I just don't remember it exactly. But it was obvious that there were so many people that had because they'd been to our adult education program. And um, all these things um, played in to what was our goal. So what was our goal? Our goal was to establish a board that was able to do the job for this community meaning the one I have described, and do it the way they wanted us to do it. Our goal at the beginning was to find out what that was. When we went out recruiting, which both Joyce and Joe were recruited, we, it was exceedingly important first that the person have enough time to do it, the willingness to do it, the willingness to take the time to do it, 
that they not have an agenda. We did not want people coming in that saw this as a political stepping stone, as it has been for many trustees all through the state. So um, if you had the time and you had the interest, uh, we wanted you. We had four children, and four children take a lot of time, and uh, the college took a lot of time. And um, I can remember we went out, we had to go out for bonds and all, and we finally passed a bond issue. I'm sure Joe Dobbs told you about that. This was a great moment. And the news came across, and I got it on the telephone, and I came to the dining room table, and we were all sitting there. I said, oh, this is just wonderful. You just can't believe it. We passed the bond issue. We started out with Bob Rockwell, and um, then very shortly after, um, we had Giulio Bordalazzo, who was one of the old Santa Barbara families. And then we had to replace Giulio and uh, Lorenzo D'Armi, who was our uh, uh, business manager, said he would be willing to be president for one year on, and was Giulio Bordalazzo's cousin, another old family. He would be willing to do it for one year on the absolute uh, assumption that he would be unwilling to take it after that. So that's when we went out looking, and that's when we found Glenn Gooder, and that's when uh, Lorenzo went on to county school superintendent. So, um, I mean, and he was another one of these people that from the beginning, I was very well aware that he knew, he knew a lot about what the job was. He really understood it, but he was very, cautious. He didn't let, try to lay it out or anything. He just was available to our information. And the information that came, came to all of us. I mean, it wasn't, you know, slipped to us under the table. And Glenn Gooder was very instrumental in helping us find Peter. And I can remember up at this campus center, and I was at the podium, and I was, of course, facing the back of the room. The whole college was assembled facing the front of the room, and they walked in the back of the room through the glass doors, and it was like a sea of cows, all the heads turned like this, and I could just see them, here he comes with this guy. Peter McDougall was another person who is a professional who put his stamp on this college, and I can remember, I mean, these things count. Uh, when we got Peter, he had been trained down in, um, Los Angeles, his, he was on the administration there. He was learning how to work with the state on building colleges. Well, that became absolutely crucial when he came up here. He knew how, he knew how to do it. He knew how to tell us how to do it. I mean, we needed to know how to do it. I mean, we had, by that time, we had another sea of dirt <laughs> to, you know, build on. So, um, and he was another one of the experts. So these experts came on, um, differently, but importantly for the college. And they're the ones that really put the imprint on the college. And that was the way the board always wanted it. We didn't want to be, we didn't want to be known as the college. We wanted our president to, presidents to be able to go out and speak for the college and use the word us and to mean us too. The history of this piece of property was that originally it had been built by the state college. The state college was up on the Riviera, and it was up on the Riviera this entire time that we were, that the adult education program was going through the high school. So in many people's minds, and they operated out of the same building, these two things were confused. So in the 50s, um, the, and the state college bought or acquired this piece of property to be their vocational campus, and they built the administration building. So in the 50s, um, the plan came about to use the old Marine base out in Goleta for another branch of the university and to move the state college uh, system that was on the Riviera to, out to the universities. The junior college was originally, very originally, downtown and they had picked up this land. So, it had, so people in their, the town's mind, 
there was always this question, well, just who are you out there? Are you the community college, or are you the state college, or are you the, the university? And in fact, we had been all these things, and we still own some land. Uh, I think the, the state, the university still owns some oil wells, uh, oil land down under the bridge. And so there was the case of getting ourselves melded into this place. I had many satisfying moments. I think the a collage of all the graduations. When we would hear from the students, when we would see the students, when we would hear the student speaker, when we would get a picture of who these people are that we were doing this for, it was, we always felt it was important to know the students.